Good evening. Thank you for joining. And remember, if you do like what I'm doing, please like and subscribe. It helps no matter what. As well, commenting. Commenting helps with the algorithm. It shows there's engagement with my channel. As well, one of my very active subscribers, Nasire Masti, has been commenting quite often. They have given me some things that I do want to cover in some videos. As well, this one. I'm sorry that this video took so long to come out. I got sick last week and I'm still somewhat recovering with my sinuses. So, I'm sorry that it took so long. Today, we're covering something truly ahead of its time. Germany's FG-1250 Infrared Night Vision System, developed during the latter years of World War II. This was a revolutionary piece of technology designed to give German forces an edge in night battles. We're going to deep dive into the history, development, and testing as well as its legacy in order to understand how close the Germans came to deploying true night fighting capabilities on a large scale. By 1943 and 44, Germany was fighting a losing war on multiple fronts. The Soviets were pushing westward, the Allies had landed in Italy, and the Allied bombings over Germany's major cities were intensifying. But despite the deteriorating situation, German engineers were still working on cutting-edge weaponry that could tip the scales, such as the ME-262s, the ME-264s, the V-1 and V-2 bombs, their nuclear program, and more, of which I have covered some of them, like the Maus and Lerva, and even the Flak Panzer 341, which is in my Panther Variants video. I implore you to go watch it. Warfare in the Dark was difficult, unpredictable, and and often relied on flares, most notably weaponry called Starshot, searchlights, and tracers. Visibility was limited, and surprise attacks were very risky. Unlike the Allies, who relied on superior air power in sheer numbers, Germany sought technological solutions to counterbalance their disadvantages, again such as the Maus and the ME-262. This is where the idea of infrared night vision came to be. If German forces could see in the dark, they could conduct night raids, ambushes, and even blitz-style tactics with minimal resistance. The concept wasn't entirely new. Germany had experimented with infrared technology before, but the goal now was to equip tanks and infantry with this advantage. Something to also note, America was also testing this, I don't remember the exact number, but we had a very few of our own M1 carbines equipped with our very own night vision system. We didn't employ it because it was bulky and expensive, so to truly mass produce it would have been a major undertaking and again, very expensive. Not to mention, the weight of the battery pack alone as well as the extra weight on the gun would make it very impractical. So we, back, we put it on the back burner and continued to develop night vision later on. So where did the FG-1250 night vision system come from? The project was primarily developed by AEG, Allgemeine Elektricitats Gesellschaft, one of Germany's top electronics companies at the time. The idea was simple but ambitious. Create a system that would allow Panther tanks and other vehicles such as the SDKFCs to operate in total darkness using the infrared light and optical enhancement. The development was heavily supported by the Wehrmacht's technical divisions, and after proving the theoretical feasibility, the project gained approval. The Germans needed a working prototype, one that could be tested in combat scenarios and potentially be mass-produced if it were to be successful. The FG-1250 system was revolutionary for its time. It combined an infrared searchlight and active infrared sights, allowing tank crews to see in the darkness without external light sources. The system used a 200 watt infrared spotlight mounted on the tank. This emitted infrared light that was invisible to the human eye, but could be detected using a specially designed infrared image converter in the commander's periscope. This device 
would then translate the infrared light into a visible image, displaying enemy positions, terrain, and obstacles. This periscope was also very sensitive. You might see night vision will blow out colors and darkness depending on how much light there is. But this system was so sensitive because it was super new that even the smallest amount of light would practically render it useless. This effectively allowed German crews to see through darkness, giving them a huge advantage in ambushes, night offensives, and even defensive positions. The system was primarily designed to be mounted on the Panther Alfs G and was field tested in late 1944 and 1945. The first tests of the FG-1250 were conducted on Panther tanks and SDKFZ-251 half-tracks. The testing was carried out at Dobritz and Kummersdorf, key German military proving grounds. Kummersdorf is still around too, with a lot of its infrastructure still existing in its World War II and even East German states. It is abandoned, and because of that, in a lot of disarray. So if you do plan on going to Kummersdorf, make sure you are keeping yourself safe, as again, this place was built during the 1930s and 40s, so there's more than likely a lot of asbestos and lead paint still on around. The results were promising, but not perfect. The night vision worked reasonably well at distances up to 600 meters, but there were issues. The infrared spotlight required a significant amount of power, which placed additional strain on the tank's electrical systems. The field of view was limited, meaning it was only useful in certain combat scenarios. The system was highly sensitive to battlefield conditions such as smoke, rain, and fog, which could reduce its effectiveness. And as I said, light. Light is a huge factor in night combat, especially when using night vision. Despite these limitations, German engineers were already working on improvements to the system. There were even plans to install infrared vision for every crew member in a Panther, giving the tank fully night capable combat. But by this time, it was too late. Germany's war efforts were collapsing rapidly and there wasn't enough time or even resources to mass produce the system. Though mass production never occurred, some Panthers equipped with the FG-1250 were allegedly used in the Battle of Silo Heights and possibly during operations in Hungary. However, records are scarce, and the exact effectiveness of the system in combat remains unclear. Had Germany managed to mass produce the FG-1250, the next step would have been widespread deployment on tanks and half-tracks alike. There were even discussions about equipping infantry with portable infrared scopes, similar to the later developed Zeal Garrett 1229 Vampire System, which would be used on STG-44 assault rifles. If the war had lasted longer, Germany's night fighting capabilities could have changed the way nocturnal battles were fought but the overwhelming Allied advantage made sure that never happened. Today, very few FG-1250s even survive, either in full condition with all of their parts or just at all working on their own. A few units can be found in museums, though most have been lost to history. One confirmed example does exist at the German Tank Museum in Munster, and others at Kubinka in Russia. In pop culture, the FG-1250 has appeared in video games such as War Thunder where it can be seen on the Panther II and does work, though Pan the Panther II is a rare vehicle that no one can really get anymore, so your best bet is to go either watch someone play it on YouTube or see if you can get your hands on it. Squad 44 also shows it off. And Squad 44 is a very fun and it is an incredible World War II FPS. If you know the game Squad, this is the other game to it that takes place in World War II. There's also various mods for the games Men of War and Company of Heroes that add this amazing night vision system to the games.
This once state-of-the-art technology is now a relic of the past but its development laid the groundwork for modern infrared and night vision technology used by militaries today. I thank you guys so much for watching, and again, please like, subscribe, and comment. It helps no matter what. This was an interesting one to cover, and I definitely wanted to do it at some point. The Sire Masties comment helped to push this video forward to the point that I did it. So again, keep the ideas coming in the comments. I love reading your thoughts, and your feedback really shapes the direction of this channel. I, again, I'm also thinking of doing Patreon, which could help fund the channel for whatever computer parts I need, or especially my microphone, since I'm just holding my microphone right now. I don't have a stand for it, and I also don't have a pop filter for it. And on top of that, I could even help support my family, as my parents are dealing with a lot because of the way the country is going and other reasons. So at some point Patreon might be able to help a lot more. So please let me know what you think about that idea. Again, I appreciate all of the support. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.